Southeast Asia is known as a budget traveler's paradise. Backpackers have flocked here for generations, and recently countries such as Thailand and Vietnam have come into the spotlight as popular holiday destinations. But is Southeast Asia actually that cheap? Well, you could decide for yourself because today I am doing a full budget breakdown. I will be sharing with you exactly how much I spent during my two months traveling around the region. Let's start with how much I spent overall. I have my computer, so I'm going to read off how much I spent per country. Well, let's look at this pie chart right here. While traveling around Southeast Asia, I went to Thailand, Myanmar, Vietnam, and also Laos. I went to Luang Prabang. And just from looking at the chart, you could tell that I spent the most amount of money in Thailand and also Vietnam, which makes a lot of sense because those are the countries that I spent the most time in. So I'm going to make this smaller and now we are going to focus right here. Now, if you want to know the exact numbers I spent, it is highlighted right here, particularly there. But I think that the average cost per day is a better representation since I didn't spend the same amount of time in each country. Now, immediately, I see that Thailand was only $23 per day, which was cheaper than Myanmar and Vietnam, which completely shocks me. I don't know how that happened. I was not expecting that to be that cheap, but maybe because I spent more time there. The longer you're in a country, typically the more the price goes down per day because you have more time to spread out activities and such. Myanmar was $32 a day. Vietnam was $30 a day, and Luang Prabang was only $14 per day. And now I'm going to break it down per country so you can see exactly where that money was spent. But before we do that, let's take a look at transportation days and transportation between countries. Transportation days was about $35. Honestly, I think I just didn't know what category to put transportation days in, so I just made it its own category. That was mainly when I was traveling for multiple days on buses, so I wasn't sure what country to put that information in. Then transportation between countries includes flights and long bus rides. So I flew from Bangkok to Yangon, and then from Yangon to Hanoi, and then I took a few long bus journeys. I went from Hanoi to Log Prabang, and then from Log Prabang over to Chiang Mai. It looks like in total that was $250. So here's Thailand, everything I spent. You could see that I spent a lot of money on recreation. I don't mind that one being the highest. I think that one should be the highest because that means you're doing a lot of activities and having a really great time. And then there's food and drink and accommodation as you probably would have expected to come next. Let's go ahead and make it small again. So ground transportation was rides to and from airports. Food and drink was $147, which was not bad. Recreation was $175, and this included a lot of excursions. I went on an excursion to see the elephants in Chiang Mai. I went to the sticky waterfall. I went to a cooking class, and I did some snorkeling trips down on the islands as well. Souvenirs ended up being $35, and I think I got almost every souvenir for my family in Thailand. Accommodation was $138, and this included my accommodation on the islands as well. Typical ATM fees, and then toiletries, which for Thailand just included some sunscreen and some tiger balm. Moving on to Myanmar, so first let's look at our pie chart. You could see that I spent a lot of money on ground transportation. However, the total isn't that bad considering I moved around a lot. And then accommodation and recreation, things that you would expect. How it breaks down exactly was $76 for ground transportation and this included bus rides. So Yangon to Inlay Lake and Inlay Lake to Bagan and then back to Yangon. It also included the taxi rides out to the bus stations and to the airports as well. I did have to pay a $50 e-visa to arrive in the country. Food and drink, I spent about $30. Oh, and for a reference, I spent about a week and a half in Myanmar. For the accommodation, I spent $70 which is less than $10 per day on average. Souvenirs, I only spent $16, and I got some really amazing souvenirs from Myanmar. In Inlay Lake, they have a jewelry making area where they show you how they make the jewelry, and they showed me a typical design, or a traditional design, they said it was, and I bought these earrings, and I thought they were so special and so amazing. I bought them for my mom for Christmas. Those super special earrings were only $8. Then for recreation, it was only $45, and for Myanmar, recreation included tours as well as entrance fees. You have to pay an entrance fee of, I think it was $16 to enter into Bagan. And then I think another like 
dollars to enter into in the lake and i did some tours as well i went on a bike tour with my hostel around the temples in bagan and i also went on the in the lake tour make sure you check out my Myanmar video if you haven't already seen it but for all those tours and all those entrance fees, I also believe I paid an entrance fee to get into the temple in Yangon. I thought that was a really good thing for my buck because these were life-changing experiences for me and some of my favorite memories. Now let's look at Vietnam. Right away, you could see that about half was excursions. Now that seems like a lot, but when I tell you how much I spent and what the excursions were, you will see that it was an incredible deal. And then souvenirs actually were high for this one and normally food and drink. I did have to pay a visa to enter into Vietnam, which was $25. Ground transportation was 18. Excursions were $216. And compared to the other countries, that might sound like a lot, but I did a lot in Vietnam. I went on a trek to Sapa. It was two nights, three days with a guide, with accommodation, with food, with everything. That alone could have been $200 and yet I also went to Halong Bay, the overnight cruise for Halong Bay, and sure it was a budget cruise, but it was still an overnight cruise and did everything that the other cruises did. So that's two overnight excursions for only $200. Plus, that's not all. I also did a day trip down to Ninh Binh. All of that came out to only $216, which to me is a really good deal because they were multi-day excursions. Two nights and Sapa was one of my favorite experiences to date. And then Halong Bay, of course, is such a touristy thing that they could raise the price so much more. And I thought I got a really good deal on my cruise. So yeah, I did a lot and I just thought it was a good deal for my money. I think it's really hard to put a price on experiences. Sometimes if I spend too much on food, I'm like, oh, I shouldn't have gotten that extra fifth smoothie. <laughs> but I never really regret spending money on experiences. Accommodation was under $60. I was in Vietnam for over two weeks. Definitely a good deal and the hostel had beer for free every single night and a really good free breakfast. Food and drink was about $60 and I would like to say that this could have been a lot lower. Not saying that this wasn't already a great deal because it was, but if you're going, you might spend even less than me. I ended up spending a bit more because I was having issues with my debit card. My debit card wasn't working in Vietnam. It also didn't work in Myanmar. So I was kind of running out of US cash. So I was not really using cash at all in Vietnam. I would go out to the restaurants sometimes, but most of the time I actually ate in my hostel. For example, a bowl of pho that I got was 40 cents outside of the hostel and inside the hostel I was paying over $2. Of course, that's still a good deal compared to what I paid for pho here, but I wanted to let you know that this could be cheaper for you if your debit card works. For toiletries in Vietnam, I spent $3 and for souvenirs, I spent $62. And some of the souvenirs that were really special to me from Vietnam included a headband and a wallet from Sapa. And I think I bought a pearl from Ha Long Bay. So that might be why that's so expensive compared to the other ones. And then I did laundry for $1.51. There's a reason you haven't seen laundry on here very much in any of the other countries. I actually do my own laundry. I wash my clothes in the sink, but once in a while it's nice to just get them done normally. I think they're a lot fresher that way. That's just a budget tip is to do your own laundry and you'll save a lot of money. Now let's go down and look at Lao. So like I said, I was only in Luang Prabang and oh, I don't know what happened here, but I'm pretty sure it was about $10. So for food and drink, I spent $15. And I was in Log Prabang only for a couple days. I believe it was only four or five days, but I stretched $50 to almost that entire time. Next is recreation, which was really small for Log Prabang. I had gone to the waterfall. It's a beautiful, beautiful waterfall that had cost me $2.26. We rented bikes and headed up there ourselves instead of going on an excursion, which I think might have saved a bit of money. Accommodation was $12. 12. It was only $3 a night. So yes, 12 in total. Souvenirs were $11, but I remember getting some really special souvenirs for myself and for other people. One was a painted postcard and the other was a ring and I got rings for me, my best friend, my sister, and my mom. And then of course there's ATM fees. The reason that there weren't ATM fees in countries like Myanmar and Vietnam is because my debit card didn't work so I exchanged with US cash. Luang Prabang looks a little bit different because usually recreation has a very 
very high category and here it does not it's pretty low and the highest ones are accommodation and food and drink and also souvenirs that is everything i spent in southeast asia the grand total came out to about fifteen hundred dollars which when you divide it by 52 the number of days that i was there it came out to exactly thirty dollars per day which was actually my budget for southeast asia as you could see i got some incredible deals and in my opinion this region is perfect for backpackers and people looking for a short holiday destination as well. What do you think? Is Southeast Asia actually that cheap? Is it as cheap as everybody says? I can't answer that question for you, but I hope that this was insightful and I hope if you're planning a trip to Southeast Asia, whether you're going backpacking or you're just going on a vacation, I hope that you found it very helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next adventure.